water everywhere. The whole house is completely filled with water and we can't save anything because the electricity, we don't want to get electrocuted. This shows you just how quickly the water is rushing through his backyard. Take a look down at my feet. It isn't even easy to stand out here. Now I'm going to walk over just a couple of feet because somewhere his backyard drops off. This creek is usually just about four feet deep. Now it's roughly six feet deep. So in about 50 years, the stream has been jammed off to one side instead of out here where it used to live. And in the large floods, it jumps the banks and would come washing across the yards. And after those large floods, the citizens who lived here chose to sell to the city to allow this project to take place. This is an urban creek. Um, we have to make the fish happy. We have to make people happy. We have to deal with flooding. Um, those are all aspects of this project that are being addressed through the design and through the construction. As a civil engineer, I try to find ways that we can restore vitality and health to the, some of our degraded landscapes. The Knickerbocker Project really represents a turning point for the city of Seattle, where on this badly degraded stretch of creek, we're resetting the clock. We're moving back 100 years to give the creek room to breathe, room to move. And as a result, the benefits we get, better storage for floodwaters. We get a green space that's vital, it's full of life. We get reduced flooding downstream. We get salmon coming back. So the Knickerbocker Project really exemplifies the highest spirit of what we can do as a society and what we're obligated to do as scientists, as engineers, as policymakers, as citizens, to recognize that streams and rivers need room to move, to grow, to live just like we do. Say, how can we continue to move this out into our urban spaces in the city to benefit not only the species we share this precious planet with, but those neighbors? The Knickerbocker Project is the first step down that road where we integrate human needs and ecological needs for the long-term sustainability, and we set a model for other cities to follow. I'm glad Seattle Public Utilities took the risk and built an innovative system that's quite unique when we look at the United States. And based on the data we've collected, these systems have um, a lot of potential to be used more widely. They have a lot of advantages. Well done, Seattle Public Utilities. about that in my extended forecast in just a few more minutes. All right, Chan, we'll see you then. Some good news tonight. For the first time in eight years, Chinook salmon have been spotted spawning in Seattle's Thornton Creek. This part of the creek was restored by Seattle Public Utilities back in 2014 to try and lure the salmon back. And it looks like their plan's working.